And I'm going to let you know this. I think whatever the NCAA is taking into account everything, the 85 scholarships, the transition in there, you guys scheduled FBS schools your first year in there. Don't you think like D1 environment should count as one of the like requirements on whether or not you should be treated the same as everybody else? This has been the best environment that we've experienced. Oh, yeah, for sure. We've been, <laughs> yeah, every power five school. We've been in the Pac-12. We've been in the SEC, we're in the Big Ten, right. we're in all these, this is the best environment that we've had. I feel like that should be something. And are you guys pitching that when you're talking to the NCAA? Is that a part of the conversation or no? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm disappointed that somebody didn't take the bull by the horns. Uh -huh. And when you say there's four committees that had to vote on this in less than a week, I mean, give me a break. Yeah, it's, a, it's absolutely absurd. I hope this weekend will maybe do a little bit more nudging for a right decision to be made. But the NCAA has proven time and time again that there are zero brains in that building. Hopefully, they will find some in this particular situation. Because the Sun Belt has already said, they, right? If the NCAA says good, you guys are good, right? Hadn't the conference already said True. that? True. Yeah, they have, right? Yes. Hmm. Some bout said it's not on us. It's on NCAA. If the NCAA says yes, some bout says well, you guys are good to do go. you detect a trend here? Everybody's <laughs> passing the buck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody's doing that. AJ has a question for you, Coach. Coach, for you as a coach, you're talking about being a leader. Obviously, I feel like you have a complete control of what's going on here at this university and your football program. But is it nice in some sense that you guys all obviously have a common goal that you're going towards, but now you guys kind of have a common enemy as well to where this is where we set our sights. And that's not what drives you, but at least it has something that – this, this is energy, one way or the other, whether it's negative towards somebody or what. Is, there, is it nice almost that you have something that you guys are all fighting for together? Well, you know what? I, I, last year we had a big chip on our shoulder because we knew we couldn't go anywhere, right? This year we really didn't. Our goal was to win them all, and I thought common sense would prevail. But now, you know, we have developed this chip on our shoulder here in the last 48 hours, yeah. and it needs to grow by Saturday because we got a tough game coming up. Let me tell you, App State, they're good and they're playing good. Yeah, but they're running into a buzzsaw. Yeah. Yeah. I think that has always been something the football gods have rewarded people that have gotten screwed. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned when you were looking around, you know, before you took this job, the JMU was one of those places where it's like, hey, they have a chance to win a national championship every year. But we, we talked to Pete Thamel, and, and, you know, he's been covering college football for a really long time and he basically said like hey no one's done what they've done transitioning and move up when you did take the job was that the expectation like hey we're going to hit the ground running and obviously you know you have to you know do the the two-year deal or whatever but did you expect to be this good right away when you came in moving up to you know a, a bigger division truthfully you know nothing that the JMU football program accomplishes surprises me because we have such a great championship culture our guys are used to overcoming adversity, obstacles, and being cool when the chips are down. Nothing we do surprises me.